maiden as Tracy Edwards, cool, calm and collected. I guess, you know, I used to think what most of us think is that when you get to a beach and you reach the sea, that's the end. It's actually the beginning. And to discover it's the beginning is, like, wow, there's a whole world out there that I can reach by this medium, you know, by this method. What is the most daunting moment at sea? Can you think of it? Being the skipper of a boat in the Southern Ocean, it absolutely trumps anything else. I mean, it's the peak of utter terror. You know, they say that sailing is 99% boredom interspersed with 1% sheer terror. That, that's that 1% of sheer terror. Because I've been in the Southern Ocean on the 85-86 race, and I really hadn't worried about it at all. Mm. Uh, you know, I was with these amazing guys, these sailors, with this, you know, so much experience, and I felt really safe and secure. Um, but that was great experience for me, learn, sort of learning how to sail the boat and how things work in the Southern Ocean. Going back there on Maiden, you know, we... we the, the beginning of the second leg, we all felt really confident and very determined. I think probably though, when we hit our first big storm, it, it really was like someone had said to me, oh, you are now the skipper of a boat in the Southern Ocean, you're in a really big storm. It's like, yeah. oh my goodness. So hiding that fear, and of course, you know, everyone's under a microscope on the boat and you, you can't hide. Um, you can pretend, I did a lot of pretending. Oh, that's fine, oh, I've been through worse than this. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Ah, 50 foot waves, don't worry about it. Um, Were they 50 foot waves? Yeah. Yeah. So, but you have to remember, I think, and that's a little bit of a false um, image, if you like, because, of course, you are already in an environment which is moving around at these extraordinary heights. So it's not as if it's a 50 foot wave. And you do become used to it, or you become used to anything. Um, but the being responsible for 11 other people's lives, that for me was the moment of. Okay, I think I'd better get this one right. 50 foot waves. Is it 50 foot all the time? No, 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 20 to 30. Um, and winds? I guess the most we had was 92 knots. Um, 92? That's probably, yeah, that was a gust. We were 70 to 86 knots of wind at that time, and that gust of 92, which we all tried to ignore on the did you just see that? No, no, didn't see that. No, that didn't just gust to 92. I mean, just the ferocity. And you forget, you see, it's like childbirth. But you, you build up this image of, of your mind of the ocean. And, and I guess, you know, you, you try and remember the bad bits, but mostly to me, when I remember the ocean, it's benign and kind and jolly. And it's only when you're back in that environment that you are so, I wouldn't say horrified, but just in awe in awe of the power around you and you feel so small and so mortal. Um, and I think it's probably, you know, one of the very few times in my life I have ever really sort of feared death and, and felt that sense of, you know, that, that sort of feeling down the back of your spine. But no, it's, it's truly impressive. And what is your opinion of women sailing as it stands today? Oh, we've got a long way to go. Um, but we have some extraordinary female sailors out there now. I mean, some really, really incredible women. And I think the Volvo, the, the good thing that it did do through Mark Turner was make it an advantage to have women on board. You know, it didn't say you must have women on board, which everyone would have bought at, and including us. Uh, but to make an advantage, I think, was a good thing. I think guys got, an exp got the chance to sail with women, maybe, which they hadn't had before. And many of them said, you know, there was one in particular that hated it but you know most of them said they thought it was absolutely brilliant think they thought having girls on board was a good thing um, so long may that continue but uh, I think higher up in our sports you know at the governing body level we, we need more women uh, mm. seriously what was your reaction to the film the first time that you saw it I couldn't believe what an amazing job they'd done I, I was blown away at the footage that they found I haven't seen some of that I've never seen some of that footage some I'd seen and sort of been lost in the mist of time. I mean, I knew Jo had filmed a lot, but I had no idea. This amazing library that she had, you know, sort of put together. And I mean, there were moments where we, you know, we would say to Jo, oh, you put that camera in my face one more time. But then she found ways of hiding that she was filming. And I think that's why she gets these quality shots where people don't know they're being filmed. Yeah. 
And I, you know, we all watched it together, and I told them to trust Alex. We had no editorial rights. That was nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, so we all watched it together, and by the end, we were blubbing like babies. And um, apparently, there's no audience that hasn't cried at the end. So it was. Including me. <laughs> oh my God.